What's going on everyone? I'm Andrew and today I want to talk about building and deploying server-side Swift applications. Now why would we want to do this? I think as iOS developers there's so many times we're building something on the client whether it's a new UI kit or Swift UI or whatever it might be and we have to reach for back-end tools to go populate our screens with data or send a notification or do something that we just can't simply do on the client side. And today I see a ton of iOS developers reaching for other languages than what they're used to writing. Things like Node.js and TypeScript, Ruby, Python, etc. And what I want to show you is that we can just use Swift and we can do it in a way that is as simple and as easy to use as those other languages and it'll make you feel right at home as an iOS developer. Today specifically I want to talk about deploying to the Vercel platform. The most common backend framework for Swift is Vapor, and it is an incredible piece of software, and I definitely recommend you check it out, but it has one major downside in my opinion, and that's that you end up paying for a 24-7 running server. A lot of developers that I've talked to, they're looking for services that have free tiers because they don't want to step up and pay many dollars per month for a server. And so forget all that. What I want to show you is that we can get extremely high performance backends for effectively zero dollars when it's not in use. And the way we're going to do that is deploying to a serverless platform like Vercel, which is backed by AWS Lambda, and we're going to use tools that are officially supported by Apple. So the goal of this video is to build a server-side Swift application, run it locally so you can test your own work, and then deploy it to the Vercel platform. So let's jump in and actually get started. Okay, let's get started building our Swift application. So the first thing we wanna do is let's head to the command line and we're gonna create a brand new Swift project using the Swift package manager. So let's go ahead and make a new directory. For now, I'm just gonna call it hello Swift. Let's CD into that folder. And then to create a new application, we're gonna type Swift package init and we need to declare the executable type. In this case, we are, we're building an actual executable that's going to be run by the AWS Lambda platform. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And you'll see what happened here is uh, Swift Package Manager created a, a couple skeleton files for us. So now let's head back and open up Xcode. Let's open up the Hello Swift folder. And you can see here that we have a completely blank Swift application. So they gave us this main file, which is empty, and then our package.swift file. The first thing we want to do is add the Vercel dependency, which is a package that I wrote, uh, which actually wraps the Vercel runtime and the AWS Lambda runtime and gives us a nice, of really nice Swift APIs on, on top of it. So let's go ahead and declare our dependency array. Let's declare a package, and what we're going to do is install Vercel from GitHub, um, which I publicly host, of course. And if I go ahead and click Save, you'll see we immediately start downloading the Vercel dependencies. And really, the only dependency is this Swift AWS Lambda runtime, which is developed by Apple. Uh, and we provide APIs on top of this that make developing locally and then developing for the Vercel platform as easy as possible. The next thing we want to do is we want to declare our platforms. Um, so in our case, we're going to declare macOS version 12. Uh, even though we're actually building for Linux behind the scenes, when we develop locally in Xcode, it's a lot easier to just declare macOS as the only platform. And then lastly, we have to add the Vercel dependency to our target. So go ahead and click Save. Let's build for Mac. If I click Build, and there we go. So we've built all of these dependencies and of course our main file is completely empty so nothing really interesting happened here. So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to rename this main file. Main.swift uh, is, a, is a special file which basically gives you a direct entry point into your application. In our case we want to be able to control the exact entry point so we can't use main.swift. I'm just going to rename this to app.swift. Let's import the Vercel package. And now we're going to define uh, a new struct called app, and we're going to have it conform to the request handler protocol. Now the request handler pro protocol only has one method, which is called on request. And this is now the entry point to our application. All requests, whether it's from a browser or a client, 
they're all going to come through this this async function. Uh, and to start, I just want to return something really simple. So just a 200 response, and let's just send back hello Swift. Now, if I go ahead and click build again, you're going to notice that building failed, and that's because since we renamed main.swift, it doesn't know where our main entry point is. So all we have to do is declare at main on this struct. And if I click build, there you go. Now you can see that, that, that we build it successfully. Great. So we built an application, but this isn't very interesting. How do we even know if it works? So now let's go back to the command line. And inside of the Vercel package is actually a package plugin that I developed to help with working with the Vercel platform and also to help you run the application locally. So let's go ahead and run Swift package, disable sandbox. And the reason we have to do this is because we are, we're actually running HTTP servers behind the scenes. And so we need to exit the sandbox that SPM provides in order to be able to make those HTTP requests. And the command is Vercel dev. And so if I go ahead and click enter, you'll see it's gonna download our dependencies and it's going to rebuild our code. And so the first thing it does is we actually start it up an HTTP server uh, on this port 7676. But let's let it keep building. Great, now you can see here that the build completed. And if I scroll back up a bit, and I, if I command click this, you'll notice we opened up a browser and you could see here that we're returning Hello Swift. So not super interesting, but uh, I haven't really seen any other local server-side development for, for Swift that's actually this easy to do. And so just to prove that again, so let's just change this to hello Vercel. And let's rerun this. And this build should be a lot faster because it's a subsequent build. And if I go back here and refresh, you can see that it now says hello Vercel. So let's go ahead and stop this. And now what we want to do is we actually want to deploy this to, Ver to the Vercel platform, right? We've now tested our application locally, but now we want to deploy it and get it running uh, on an actual server that we can share the URL to. So a couple things. First things first, you obviously need to go create a Vercel account. Vercel accounts are completely free. Uh, so go ahead and follow their sign up process. And when you're done, you'll end up with a free a hobby account, which is all we need to get started. The next thing you're going to want to do is install the Vercel CLI. This is important because we need to basically link up our project locally on our Mac to our Vercel account. So go ahead to vercel.com slash docs slash CLI and just follow their, their installation instructions. And then lastly, you need to install Docker for Mac. You don't have to do anything crazy here. You really just need to get Docker installed and up and running. Follow their installation instructions. And then uh, the Vercel package plugin, plugin actually handles all of the confusing parts about Docker behind the scenes. So you really don't have to do anything at all other than just get it running on your Mac. So the first thing we need to do is we actually need to go create a new Vercel project. You could do this from uh, their dashboard, but the problem is, is the dashboard expects you to be able to link the account to, uh, to a GitHub repo. And we can't do that because Vercel doesn't know how to build Swift code. And so I'm going to show you how to mimic the true Vercel commit workflow where you can actually deploy every single commit. But for now, to keep things simple, uh, you're just gonna go ahead and type the command Vercel link. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna link this local directory to your Vercel account and actually create the project. So of course, we wanna set up a new, uh, new project here. And you can pick any team that you're a part of. I'm gonna pick my local scope. And we're not gonna link to an existing project. In this case, we're gonna create a new one. Uh, in this case, Hello Swift makes sense to me. This is the current directory. Great, now you can see what it's doing. It's basically uploading this initial shell of an application. Uh, and so this first upload will, will take a little while. Um, but if I actually go back to my Vercel account, what you're gonna see is when this is done, is it's actually gonna populate a shell project here. So let's go ahead and wait for this to finish. Okay, great. So now our project's been uploaded and it's going to ask us if we want to modify any of these settings, which we don't need to. So I'm going to click no. And there we go. So now if I go back to my Vercel console, you can see we basically just have an empty project here. There's no actual deployments. It just created this shell of a project. So now the next thing we want to do is we, we want to run and deploy. So we want to deploy our code to the Vercel platform. And the way we're going to do that is, again, we're going to type uh, Swift package disable sandbox. 
versus cell, and this time we're gonna type the deploy command. And I'm gonna add this production flag to indicate that this is our first production deploy. So let's go ahead and click enter. And now you can see what's happening because we're deploying to Vercel, we can no longer build for Mac OS. And so what we're doing is we're actually gonna be building on the Swift Amazon Linux container uh, via Docker. And so behind the scenes, um, this is communicating with the Docker daemon that's running and it's pushing your code over, over to a Docker container. It's building it on the Amazon Linux container. And then that's what's ultimately gonna be uploaded to Vercel. So this is gonna take a little while uh, the first time you run it. Uh, I'm on an M1 Mac and today we have to emulate and run for x86. And so that emulation is what's gonna cause this to slow down. Um, Amazon, Amazon Lambda actually supports uh, ARM64 runners. So as soon as Vercel adds support um, in their build spec, we'll be able to build a lot faster. All right, now you can see it's actually starting to build our code. All right, you can see we're at the last step here. So now we're actually compiling app.swift, which is our file. And there we go, the build complete. And now what we're actually doing is we're actually uploading the final build product to Vercel. And now it's just finishing up. And look at this, so it just spit out a production URL. And so let's go ahead and copy this. And if we open this up, now you can see we have a fully deployed Swift application to Vercel. And if we take a look at this, let's go ahead and look at the headers that are actually coming back. And so we can see here that this is fully running through Vercel's CDN. Uh, obviously this isn't doing something very interesting. So let's go ahead and do something slightly more interesting. If we open up httpbin.org, what we can do is let's go grab a JSON response. And let's actually proxy this API through Vercel. So let's do let res equals try wait and let's go ahead and fetch this endpoint. And what we can do is we can issue a fetch request and this fetch function is built into the Vercel package. It basically just wraps URL session. And now let's go ahead and return this JSON response. But what we can also do um, is actually control some of the Vercel CDN with cache headers. So let's go ahead and spec specify a cache control with a max age of five and a staleness of 60. So let's go ahead and run this first. So let's go ahead and run this locally using Vercel dev. And there we go. So now we're running locally. So you can tell we're, we're properly fetching from HTTP bin. Looks good. And now let's go ahead and deploy this again. And you'll notice that the subsequent deploys are much faster, right? Because the Docker container is still cached. It has our cached build directory. And so now at this point, all it has to do is recompile the changed files. So there we go, the build completed. It's gonna go ahead and upload. And look at that, it just finished. Let's go ahead and click this URL. And there we go. Instantly without waiting at all, uh, Vercel cleared all their caches and they're now serving our, our new code here. And let's go ahead and look at the headers again this time. And what you'll notice is now we're actually getting back cache hits because we declared that five second cache. And then we specified a staleness value of 60. So what it's gonna do is behind the scenes, it's gonna serve a cache response and it's gonna fetch, um, it's, it's gonna run our Swift code after five seconds and, and serve a stale response until, uh, until it gets the new value. And so hopefully this shows you just how powerful uh, server-side Swift development can be on a platform like Vercel and AWS Lambda. I hope you enjoyed this video. I plan on producing quite a bit more of these. There's other platforms that you can deploy to. Um, you might have noticed the Swift Cloud name uh, from the Vercel package. Swift Cloud is a platform that I've built to make deploying server-side Swift as easy as possible. So if you're interested in this stuff, please go check it out. Deploy to Vercel and keep writing Swift. Thank you.